Hi, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to install Hyper-V, go through setting up a virtual switch and also creating VMs. So first I'm going to talk about the hardware that I'm installing this on and I understand in the corporate environment you're going to have probably a 32 core or a 64 core physical machine. So in my case, uh, this is a lab machine of mine, so I just have a AMD 6 core and 24 gigs and I plan on using 2 to 4 gigs per VM that I create. So the hardware itself has two Ethernet cards, one for the host and one for the VM. So each of these are gigabit Ethernet cards and uh, this particular one that I've highlighted here is for the host machine while this will be reserved for the virtual switch where all of the VM traffic will go through. So this one will be the core of the virtual switch created under Hyper-V. As far as disk, disk drives, uh, it's very likely in the corporate world you're going to have a SAN. In my case, I have a local 2 terabyte hard drive and also a SSD drive that is half a gig. So I'll be storing most of my 40 gigs to 60 gig VMs in this SSD drive while some of the backups or some of the little used VMs will be in the hard drive itself. So that is the hardware that I am going to install this on. So I'm just going to go right ahead and bring up Server Manager and start installing Hyper-V. So first I am going to click on Add Roles and Features. And what I'm going to do is click Next and select Role-Based or Feature-Based Installation. I've selected the current server that I am on and uh, just checking off the Hyper-V. So when I check off the Hyper-V here in the server roles, it'll bring up some prerequisites. So I am going to add those features. And once I add those features, I'm gonna click Next. And Next again. And Next. So this here is prompting me to reserve one of the Ethernet cards for a virtual switch. I am actually going to do that later in the Hyper-V Manager, so I am just going to click Next. So this screen here is prompting me for live migration, which is the migrating of the VMs from server to server on your Hyper-V cluster. And I am not supporting this currently, so I am just going to click Next. So this is prompting me to place the virtual hard disk and also the configuration files. I actually do have a pre-defined location for that, which is on my SSD drive. So I am going to go to the E drive, and I have my virtual hard disk here. So I am going to put in that folder, and also my config files here. And once that is defined, I'm going to click Next. And now I'm simply going to confirm and click Install. And this will take about 5 to 10 minutes to install. So I'm going to pause the video here and wait for the installation to complete. Now the installation completed in about 2 minutes. And as you can see, it prompts me and requires a restart. So I'm going to go ahead and restart my server here. So my server is boot back up, so now I can configure my Hyper-V Manager. So I'm going to go into Tools under Server Manager here and go to Hyper-V Manager. And the first thing I'm going to have to do is set up my virtual switch. So I am going to highlight the computer or server. Click on Virtual Switch. And I'm going to select External. So what I'm creating over here is going to be a virtual switch that is in parallel with my host machine. So when I create this virtual switch and assign it to my VMs, what's going to happen is those VMs will be able to reach the same DHCP as if it was on the same network as my host. So I am going to select create virtual switch here, selecting external. 
and I am going to type in here Hyper-V external virtual switch and this is the controller that I want to choose so this is the controller that I have reserved for the VMs while this one the PCIe is actually the controller for my host machine and so I am going to select apply and click yes and this will take just a couple of seconds here while it creates the virtual switch and so I am going to click OK and now I am ready to create my virtual machines but before I do that I want to show you what that creates so if I go into my network and I open up the network sharing and I choose change adapter settings you'll notice it created the virtual switch here and again this is going to be the basically the network card which is this physical network card here and this physical network card is not going to have an IP because the individual virtual machines that I create pointing to this virtual switch will have the IP addresses and I will demonstrate that after I create the VMs so let's go back to virtual Hyper-V manager and I'm going to right click on my server say new virtual machine and go through this wizard here and I will just name it Cobra and that will be my default location where I have all my virtual machines and I am going to select so I'm just gonna select generation 1 here and click next and I will be giving this 4 gigs 96 and I'll requesting to use dynamic memory meaning that it will only reserve memory that is actually occupied or be, or in use not the full chunk up front and the connection here is my virtual switch and again this will create the network adapter within the VM that will go through my physical drive my physical network card and I am going to say 40 gigs here or 60 gigs and again that is exactly what I want so I'm going to say next and I do want to point it to a bootable CD-ROM I'm going to browse to that which is on my E drive My D drive here under I ISO root. I am going to select a outdated version of Windows 2016 technical preview. I'm going to click next. And this will simply start the installation here. So once I right click and say connect. and turn on the virtual machine here it will go into basically the post boot up mode as it normally would loading the files so I'm not going to go through all of this I am just going to install the operating system then show you the network card and the configuration of the network card within this and as you can see I am simply gonna click install now and I will simply uh, fast forward here as you can see this is or actually let me show you the virtual hard disk the 60 gig drive that it'll detect here so as you can see it lets me choose the operating system that's from my ISO. I'm just going to simply click next. 
I'm gonna have a desktop for my preview accept it and here you'll notice this is the 60 gig hard drive that I've created and I'm simply gonna click next and it's simply gonna start copying and installing the file so I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna wait until this installs and then show you exactly how to configure the network card itself and the network connections from the VM from within the VM I'll show you the network connections and network adapter configuration just as if it was a physical machine so I'm gonna pause here and wait until this finishes installing so let me just configure this really quickly after it's installed the initial files and it's logging in and let me send the control alt delete so now this is like any physical machine you're gonna set up RDP on here and I'm gonna give it an IP address on the same network segment as my host So everything here is loading initially now and this network prompt comes up so the network adapter is active I'm gonna say no make it un not discoverable and I am gonna open this up well what I really want to do here is open up the network so notice I am simply going to now go into the change adapter settings and you'll notice I have a Ethernet adapter here click on properties IP address and I can assign it the IP addresses that is in the same network segment as my host. Actually, it's 88. So I'm just going to start. You know what? I am going to start with 150 here and have the same network gateway. same DNS server that I have on my host click OK here so now I could actually go on the internet and also let me set up my remote desktop here so if I go open up the properties here oops wrong item go under remote and allow connections click apply and if I now this is my host machine I'm gonna open up the terminal services client Open that up, and if I type in the IP address 192.168.88.150, you'll notice I'm prompted to connect, and my initial connection is simply administrator, and that is actually the machine name, the default machine name that was assigned. So now I am just 
RDP'd into my VM here. And what you'll notice from my VM, I let's see if I could. Okay, so my Internet Explorer is actually not activated. Let me log out here. And so let me log out. Or actually, let me simply restart my virtual machine. So notice in the background here via the Hyper-V Manager, my virtual machine's restarting. But as you can see, now everything's already set up and I'm, I'm able to remote desktop to my VM and the VM itself is able to get onto the internet and let me demonstrate that. So you notice when I set up my virtual switch having it tied to the remote having it tied to the uh, VM here and I am simply logging in So as you can see, this is precisely why I've, I'm glad I've put everything on an SSD drive. Okay, so I have I do not have my Microsoft Edge activated. Let me try to pull up Internet Explorer. So I'm going to have to enable my Internet Explorer, so let me go ahead and do that, or my Microsoft Edge. I'm going to do setpole.msc. Now, of course, all of this is unrelated to the Hyper-V Manager. Now that I have the VM up and the network adapter is obviously working. But I do want to demonstrate that the internet does work. So this is the rights that I actually have to enable. And I'll have to log out for this. So... Now that I have that enabled, shut, shut down, dash L, dash T now, or T1, or just uh, shut down, logging out, and I'm going to log back in and demonstrate for you that this can actually go on the internet. So I'm going to now go into Microsoft Edge. And again, this is an outdated version of the Windows 2016 that I've installed. So as you can see, it already went on to the internet. And if I go to Google, you notice it'll bring up Google here. And what I want to do here is also RDP in one more time. So this is the so this is the VM via Hyper V Manager. I am going to go in and bring up my remote desktop again and connect right to the VM. And as you can see. Now I'm connected to that VM. And that's really it. That's really what I wanted to show. It was a little bit longer than I thought to, to actually demonstrate the creation of a VM. But I really did want to do an end-to-end, -end, a complete end-to-end -end here. And there you go. That's really it. And uh, I hope this helps. And please subscribe if this was helpful. And thank you for watching.